It's Friday, June the 6th, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number 37 of TEN, Transport Evolved News, for the week beginning June the 2nd, 2014. Yeah, I know I should be off in Europe covering the Wave Trophy, but we hit some major snags in France and Belgium when it came to charging our leaf. If you want to find out more about what happened, head over to www.transportevolve.com for the gruesome post-mortem. But for now though, let's get on with the show and happier news. While we didn't make it to Stuttgart, Germany to take part in the week-long wave trophy, 507 other electric car drivers did and managed to set a new world record in the process. To mark the start of the WAVE trophy, those 507 electrically powered vehicles paraded through the streets of Stuttgart, smashing a previous Guinness World Record by more than 140 cars. Although only 80 cars were taking part in the WAVE proper, the remaining cars came from all over Europe specifically to take part in the world record attempt, and of course to give a massive send-off to the WAVE participants. Well done to everyone who managed to make it, and Here's to more records next year. I wonder if anyone was waved off. Talking of getting more electric cars on the road, eight US states took another step last week towards making buying an electric car easier than ever before. Following in the footsteps or tire tracks of California, Oregon, Connecticut, Maryland, Massachusetts, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont have joined the land of HOV lane access stickers in a pact to do everything they can to get more ultra low emission and zero emission vehicles on the road. The goal? To get at least 3.3 million plug-in vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles on their collective roads by 2025, using everything from parking perts and HOV lane access decals to purchase incentives and tax breaks for those who want to make the switch from gasoline to something greener. While final details haven't been set in stone yet, the pact between the Super 8 states will include a commitment to purchase more EVs and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles for governmental fleets too. So if you live in one of those eight states, you may soon to start noticing more zero emission vehicles on the street than ever before. Staying with green environmental policy, the US EPA announced plans this week to drive a 30% reduction in carbon emissions from power stations by 2030 making the electricity that American uses in their homes greener than ever before. Called the Clean Power Plan and executed by the EPA under executive powers granted to the president, coal-fired power plants will need to reduce their carbon emissions dramatically over the next two and a half decades, while other greener power generation methods are promoted by the US government. While the regulations aren't law yet, they're about to undergo a public consultation process, the chances are we'll see tough new power station emission law making it onto the books sooner rather than later, and certainly before the upcoming 2016 presidential election. What does this have to do with electric cars? Well, the cleaner the electricity used to charge your car, the cleaner your electric car is. And unlike gasoline cars, electric cars are just getting cleaner and cleaner as the power mix used to charge them cleans up its act. When it comes to electric car range, Tesla's all-electric Model S sedan with optional 85 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack is unarguably champion among production electric vehicles. While its EPA rating is just 265 miles per charge, it is possible to push range well beyond 300 miles with the right person behind the wheel. But that 300 miles in range pales into insignificance next to an aluminum air battery demonstrated at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada this week. Capable of more than 1,000 miles without needing a charge, the all-new battery could make it possible to drive from Portland to Los Angeles on a single charge. Produced by Israeli firm Finergy, the aluminum air battery uses aluminum for the anode, but air for the cathode, and its electrolyte is plain old water. There are some problems at the moment, like the fact you can't recharge it and have to visit a service center for replenishment when your 1,000 miles are up. But this battery is designed to operate in place of range extended engines, giving you a little emergency boost when your car's lithium ion battery pack has run out. Neat. There is nothing more frustrating to an electric car driver than turning up at a charging station to find that none of the 20 million charge cards you have want to work with it. Believe me, that's one of the reasons we didn't make it to the wave this year. But that should all be a thing of the past though for Japanese electric car drivers with the launch of Nippon Charge Service, a nationwide access system for public charging stations. 
Operated jointly by Nissan, Honda, Toyota and Mitsubishi, as well as the Development Bank of Japan, Nippon Charge Service will take care of billing owners for the electricity they use at public charging stations, send the money to those who own the charging stations, and make sure that one single card will give you the keys to the entire kingdom. As someone who's just got all the locks on her house changed into a single key, I can tell you that's a pretty sweet feeling. There's been a lot going on in Silicon Valley this week. Apple unveiled its new operating system and programming language, and Tesla Motors had its annual shareholder meeting at the Computer Museum. But despite Apple's new shiny shiny, we think the award for surprises comes this week from Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who promised something pretty controversial would happen in the near future involving Tesla patents. Answering a question from a shareholder about the intersect between his duties as Tesla CEO and his desire to see everyone in an electric car, Musk admitted that Tesla couldn't change the world on its own, and after a very long pause, hinted that he was about to do something which could change the face of the EV world forever. Sadly, he didn't say what, other than patents, but we and other news outlets think we're about to see some of Tesla's legendary patents perhaps ones with relation to battery or charging technology, get blown wide open and made open source. Imagine if every EV had Tesla supercharging technology. That would be so cool. Staying with Mr. Musk for a second, that annual shareholder meeting also confirmed something we'd suspected for a while. It was Ford who made Tesla lose the E in sexy. We are, of course, referring to the Tesla Model E trademark, something which Tesla quietly dropped earlier this year without any fanfare, less than a year after registering it. According to Musk, the whole idea of getting the Tesla lineup to spell sexy was initially a bit of a joke between himself and a friend, but soon it became a real plan. Joke or not, however, Ford wasn't happy when Tesla trademarked the Model E. Having also a claim on the name, Ford threatened Tesla with legal action, so Tesla was forced to drop the idea. They're killing sex, joked Musk. We can't agree more. The little Renault Twizy, and other limited speed electric quadricycles like it, are great fun to drive around town, especially if it's nice and warm outside but they're also putting you at risk of greater injury in the event of an accident than you would be in a full-size car. At least, that's the opinion of European crash test agency Euro NCAP, which is calling on automakers and policymakers to set higher crash test standards for these tiny vehicles. Under current European law, quadricycles have similar safety requirements to motorcycles and don't need to have the same airbags and crumple zones found in regular cars. The result is that many quadricycles are shockingly bad when it comes to crash safety. To prove it, Euro NCAP took four popular European quadricycles, three electric and one gasoline, and put them through the same crash test used on full-size cars. The Twizy fared best with a score of six out of a possible 16, so it kind of proves that Euro's NCAP is right. Let's hope we see better quadricycle safety standards in Europe very soon. Compliance cars, that's cars made specifically to satisfy various zero emission mandates in states like California, are made in just enough numbers by automakers so that they can continue to sell gas guzzling SUVs and luxury sedans. And here at Transport Evolved, we've never shied away from telling you which fit the compliance car table, from Toyota RAV4 EVs and Fiat 500Es through to the Kia Soul EV and Honda Fit EV. But now we've got a new car to add to the list, the Hyundai Tucson hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, which Hyundai admitted this week is being introduced into the US purely to satisfy California's zero emission vehicle mandate. Admitting it will lose money on each of the $499 lease FCV vehicles, our Hyundai boss this week said the company is only making them for ZEV credits, far more than it would get for producing an electric car. At least it's nice to hear someone being honest and open about the fact, eh? That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us for our talk show later on today when we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, stay juiced up. <laughs>